Tone Hub users can expect a wide variety of sounds from this pack with 16 different amps uh, dating back to the 60s all the way to brand new amps from uh, you know a couple of years ago. I've captured some high gain tones, some mid gain tones, and some clean tones that work really well in the rock genres and the metal genres and uh, even in the indie genres. I've released a few packs with STL now and there's a few things that make this pack unique. One of the main things is that this one was created with Tone Hub in mind. My other packs were created before Tone Hub existed, so I was able to keep in mind the features of Tone Hub and the sounds that naturally come from Tone Hub while making it, and it actually gave me a lot more flexibility than the previous packs. Another thing about this pack is that my amp collection has changed, and uh, I've got different cabs than I was using before, so all the cabs are completely different. All the amps are different, even though some of the amps are technically the same amp, they've had modifications done to them, or I'm using what's called the hot mod in it, which replaces one of the tube gain stages and actually adds more gain to the amp in a different way than maybe the amp had before. So this is all completely fresh and the tones were created with a new approach. Another cool thing about this pack is it contains some amps that I was able to get my hands on that you're rarely gonna hear anywhere else. I was actually able to use one of High Watt's 50 watt high gain amps, which you really don't see very much. It's a modern amp they make right now uh, that was designed by a really popular uh, high gain amp guru. And it was so cool. And I got to bring it into the studio and I used it on a couple records. They let me have it for a while. And I also got to include it in this pack. And I, I think it's super unique sounding and it's a really cool high gain amp. And High Watts always had an awesome lineage of uh, doing unique and incredible things with their amps. Another cool amp in this pack is the Fender Custom Shop Tone Master, which you really don't hear about much. It's actually one of, I think it was one of Dave Grohl's favorite amps for a long time. And I found out about it through an interview with him and I was like, well, let me look that thing up. And I realized they're not super common and it was a custom shop amp uh, that was actually made here in the Northwest in the early 90s. Uh, Fender had a custom shop amp set up here before I was really even playing guitar and I didn't realize it. And so I found one of these and I grabbed it and it was in terrible shape and I kind of rehabbed it and got it back into working condition. And it's awesome. It has like the coolest cleans and like mid gains and it's become one of my favorite amps uh, as of late. Another crazy thing that happened while I was making this pack was that I was always a fan of my Crank Rev 1, but I knew it wasn't the best version of that amp. And even though I like it, I really wanted to hear what the very original versions of it sounded like, because mine was the second generation, even though it was still called Rev 1. It's kind of confusing. But I went on reverb, and I tried to find a very original one because I'd had a friend send me some clips of his and I was like, I fell in love with it. I thought it was super cool. So I got on Reverb and I found one for 400 bucks and I was like, what is going on? And it only had a picture of the front. And I was like, well, at 400 bucks, I guess free shipping, I will try this. And it, you could tell it was like from a pawn shop or something because the description was just like 100 watt amp. You know, there was like nothing. And I was like, I better buy this before I ask any questions because it's gonna go quick. It only been on there for a few hours. So I bought it and I was like, yes, uh, you know, I know this is gonna be an original because there's certain ways you can spot the originals from the faceplate. So I get this amp, the box comes, you know, it's amp day, new gear day is always super fun. And so I get it, I open up the box and I open it up to like the back of the amp, right? And the back of the amp has like 10 knobs on it. <laughs> and I was like, well, that's weird. And they were like pedal size knobs. And I was just like, that is really odd and okay. And so I pulled it out, uh, put it up on the rack and you know, plugged it in and started messing with it. And none of the controls on the front were doing anything, but it sounded insane. Like it sounded incredible. It didn't sound like a crank at all. And I was so, so confused. The thing about the crank is that there's no channel selection on the amp. You have to have the pedal. So I went and I found my other pedal and I plugged it in thinking, well, maybe like there's just something weird with the channel switching happening. And I switched it and then nothing happened when I tried to switch it to the clean channel. So I switched it back to the distortion channel and I flipped the amp around 180 
and I'm looking at the back knobs and I realize there's really tiny scribbling that says like volume one, volume two, low, mid, high, presence, shape, and all this stuff. And I realize all those knobs were the ones that were controlling the amp. Also, by the way, I forgot to mention, this amp had six preamp tubes in it, uh, <laughs> which was also weird. Normally they just have four. So I knew right out of the box that something was funky with the weird knobs and the extra tubes. So I was messing with it. I'm like, I don't know what I'm listening to, but it's insane sounding. I love this amp, but it's not a crank. I don't know what's going on. So the next thing I did was I opened it up and all of the, I looked at the bottom of the amp, uh, you know, took the chassis out and took a look and none of the knobs on the front were connected at all. There, the original PCB was gone and someone had built like on a, I think it's called like a breadboard, like point to point type PCB. Uh, and, but they had epoxied over the whole thing. So you can't see what it is or what's going on in there, but someone was building a prototype amp and then somewhere between them building the prototype amp and uh, me, it ended up in a pawn shop and the pawn shop didn't know what they had. And so I ended up with this crazy prototype amp that someone built inside a crank with the original Mercury transformers that crank was using back in the day that are awesome and uh, just put the knobs on the back instead of the front. That part of it, I have no idea. Uh, but now it just lives in the studio and I've used it on a bunch of records and it sounds incredible. It's like, uh, it's a lot of Sergio's tone on the new Royal Coda. Um, it's on uh, the, it's all over the new Radiate record. Um, it's, it's super cool. It's a very cool amp. What I look for in a guitar tone hasn't really changed, but I have this constant thirst to hear new tones and to come up with new combinations of guitar, amp, cab, and mic setups. And I always want to make sure everything I'm doing is moving forward and even cooler and kind of expands on how I've always felt about guitars. The genres that I work with are very guitar dependent and it's really important that the guitars are expressive and they really stick out and are unique from record to record. So with this pack, I've added on a couple years of me tweaking with different speaker and cab combinations and where I'm putting the mics and different head combinations and tubes and pedals and all the little things that really turn a guitar tone into what it is and not just the simple basic things uh, that, that we might think about on the surface. So I've really spent a lot of time over the years, my whole career, uh, trying to make sure that I'm, I'm doing unique stuff with the guitars and always changing what I'm doing so every record has a different sound and a different feel. So with this pack, you have my latest speaker, cab, and amp combinations that's getting a lot of use in my own work these days. The most valuable thing I've learned when recording guitars is that the takes are the most important thing. But the tone is really important too. And having a good tone while you're getting those takes is super, super important. You can always go back and change that tone later, but you wanna make sure people are playing into the clearest, most relatable sound possible. That way, all the little moves they make and any noises or mess ups are gonna be heard. So when you go back to change that tone, you're gonna know that that stuff's there or you would have already eliminated it. If you're using kind of a bad tone when you're tracking guitar, you might have kind of a hard time when you go to improve that tone. So tracking with a great tone from the beginning is really, really important. I have a propensity to get pretty nerdy about guitar stuff. And one thing that I learned probably 10 or 12 years ago was how important the speaker box and the speakers that are in the box make to the guitar tone. Before that, I really felt like, oh, you know, it was just the cab and this brand of cab is cool or this brand of cab is cool. But the reality is there was a lot of unexplored territory and something that's really prevalent in this pack and it's kind of been my latest thing is taking Mesa cabs and putting speakers that would normally be in Marshalls in the Mesa cabs because the Mesa cabs have this like 
scoop, they have this low end, and but they have a really nice present mid-range that hits at a different frequency. It's a little bit more in the middle, like in the 1K area, as opposed to a Marshall cab that hits a little more in the three to 4K area. But the Marshall speakers are more forgiving and they have like this beautiful round sound. And when I say Marshall speakers, I'm, I'm generally talking about non-V30 Celestians. So I'm talking about different eras of greenbacks and like the C75 speakers. Uh, but mostly in this pack, you're gonna hear different eras of greenbacks. And actually the V30s are pulled from uh, a Marshall cab. They're 16 ohm V30s instead of the Mesa 8 ohm V30s. And I, I know that sounds crazy, but I like a lot of my guitars at 16 ohms. My amps, I think, sound best at 16 ohms. So I've actually taken the Mesa Celestian V30s out, which are an 8 ohm load, and put in Marshall or other uh, 16 ohm V30s into the 412s to make a 16 ohm load because I feel like that's the best combination. Also, I've fallen in love with this green battery issue from the early 90s that's super cool that was found in specific Marshall cabs and it has a different cone paper than a lot of different green backs from before or after. And it's only from like the early 90s till the mid 90s, like they didn't do it for very long. So if you can find one of those cabs, they're awesome sounding, but what sounds even cooler is taking those speakers and putting them into a Mesa cab, and it's just an amazingly huge sound for me. Another thing that I've gotten into in the last few years is uh, biasing my own amps, biasing the, the power for the power tubes, and really making sure that it's dialed in perfectly for the tone, and I've learned how to do this while uh, everything is set up, and I'm listening to the cab through my monitors, and I can get things so dialed in that the tone is like, absolutely perfect as to where even though it's really important to take your amp to a tech whenever it needs service uh, if you're able to do it yourself you can really dial things in the preference as opposed to where you would just take your amp in and they're gonna bias it but they're more gonna bias it to a number and not a sound so for me when I learned uh, how to bias my own amps so many doors open because I could bias it to a range of numbers but also bias it to the exact tone that I want to get out of it so that also allowed me to switch out power tubes, which you can't do without biasing. And so I can switch out power tubes. I can go through 10 different types of power tubes, 10 different brands or models of the same type of power tube uh, in, in a sitting and decide what I think sounds best with the best bias. And, I, and I'm hearing it through my cabs and my space and not like at the text place. So a lot of doors have opened and getting really deep into that stuff, I feel like has helped me dial in tones to another level. One of my favorite amp, cab, and speaker setups has become my 1980 JMP 100 watt 2203. Uh, it was the very last model year of these made and mine when I bought it it was modified and it had some really strange mods and it had this extra um, Clean gain stage not a high gain stage. It was really strange And so I took it to my tech and he took out the some of the weird mods that had issues and then he turned the clean gain stage into kind of an effects loop slash uh, just an extra gain stage if you plug it in with a cable and then that amp, I, I really liked, but I always felt like it never quite had enough gain. And then when Hot Mod came out with, the, or when Legendary Tones came out with the new version of the Soldano Hot Mod, which is uh, actually you can replace the tubes in. The old Soldano Hot Mod had a lot of issues and, uh, you know, they were only made for a short period of time and, and they're hard to find. And what that is, is it's like a tube that goes into one of the 12AX7 spots in your preamp of the amp, but it actually adds more gain and the new one is like its own little circuit and it's like a box that pops in there and it pops into one tube slot but it has two tubes and a little circuit in it another gain stage that adds a really awesome gain to it and so that combined with the other mods that were done to this jmp it's just a monster of an amp and i love running it into uh, either a v30 cab or a cab with uh, those early 90s uh, Celestian Greenbacks, their 25 watt Greenback G12Ms. 
and uh, they're 75 hertz, which all the reissues were only 75 hertz. Uh, some of the older ones were a 55 hertz resonance, but the 75 hertz reissues uh, sound fantastic with that amp. And I'll just throw an SM57. I have these older Unidyne 57s that I really like, and I'll put a Royer 121 on it and blend them probably about 70-30 maybe 6040 where the uh, SM57 is the louder mic. One of my favorite things about Tone Hub is let's say I'm in the middle of a mix and I'm mixing for an artist that I didn't track and I'm just realizing like I'm so close, I'm almost all the way there but the rhythm guitars are funky or the specific lead, just like the, the tone isn't really there or it's kind of bringing the whole mix down, which really happens. Guitars, like distorted guitars, are kind of like white noise. So if you have the wrong kind of white noise, it's like taking up space everywhere. So with Tone Hub, I can grab the DI that's been tracked, you know, during the production process and I can throw Tone Hub on there and I can almost always improve over the tone that I've been sent. You know, unless it was a really specific thing that someone sent me, but if it wasn't, if it was just tracked as an idea or was tracked with a different plugin or something, Tone Hub pretty much always beats it. And it beats real amps sometimes too. Um, and it's just a great tool for me to just flip through a couple presets and I'm like, well, I know what my JCM 800 sounds like on this kind of guitar part. And uh, you know, oh, this was tracked with the neck pick of, of the Telecaster. So I know that the, uh, Fender Tone Master is going to be an awesome fit for this part and I can just throw that on there and I'm good to go and I can submit the mix and I don't have to go through the actual reamping process for a situation like that. I think people will really like this pack because I tried to expand on some of the things that people liked about the previous packs but maybe felt like there wasn't enough of. And then I've also kind of reached out into different areas with some new tones that you're not gonna get from the first two packs. So it doesn't really overlap with the first two. It really is its own beast. And uh, there's just gonna be a ton of awesome usable tones that are gonna be great for live or the studio. Yeah, yeah.